I really wish I had heard of this cinematic concept before I made my film. Back in 2018, I released a short film called Dying of the Leaves, and in it, I had a Civil War battle scene, and it was something that I had tediously planned out for weeks. And then when I get to production day, I was planning on taking a whole day to film this scene. Well, that's exactly what I did. I made sure every character was going through the motions. I made sure every shot I had in mind was captured. And when I got to the end, honestly, I was a bit underwhelmed. I was a bit disappointed with how this battle scene ended up looking in the final result. I recently discovered a somewhat of a secret strategy the Gladiator movie had to its opening battle scene that honestly most of it was done by mistake. Obviously there was intention behind it, but there are continuity issues all over the place, but at the same time it still works and it took so much less time to film and ultimately you get a good result that audiences are happy with. Some claim that this iconic battle scene at the beginning of Gladiator has historical inaccuracies, but pretty much universally agreed on that it's a cinematic joy. I recently came across an interview with John Matheson, who was the photographer of the film, and he kind of explains the details and issues around filming this battle scene. He was not an inexperienced cinematographer, and in fact, he went on to film movies like Phantom of the Opera in 2004, and in 2017, he was even the cinematographer for the Logan film. He approached the battle scene in a very basic way, simply what looks good to appease Ridley Scott, as well as the abstract nature of being inside of a battle. We shot a big sequence and we couldn't actually flesh it out and cover it properly. So by making it abstract and messing up with the images, you had the impression of a battle and a fight rather than actually saying, oh, he was there and he went that way and the horse went this way. It was sort of just all, it was the feeling of, it was the emotion of being in a battle rather than the actual, you know, the actual historical outlay of who went where and when they crossed the line. And I think that's the thing about Ridley, just whatever, whatever looks good, I mean, it might sound an awful thing to say, but what, and then it's, but it's the skill of putting that together. They go, hang on a minute, it was snowing. Hang on a minute, it, it, that was nighttime, now it's daytime. No one ever pulled me up on that one. But when it all goes back to the, when it drops the lowest common denominator, the base of human behavior, it becomes quite abstract. If you pay attention, this battle scene is full of continuity errors. They had to deal with running out of daylight, as well as hundreds of moving parts, both with horses and characters. Honestly, a very intimidating environment to be the one to capture on film these events. But the scenes do not rely on well choreographed movements from position A to position B constantly, but rather fast edits and close-ups of hundreds of sights you would see inside of a battle. I was all for like, you know, pull this out, disconnect that, shoot this, pull this shutter off. And you know, he was like, what is this? And I remember like after the beginning battle sequence, he leant over and said, you didn't do it all like this, did you? Because he didn't, he wasn't sure about it at all. But the editor was, the editor thought it was great. He thought it was exactly what was needed. It's extremely tedious, but a well-skilled and well-experienced editor can take tons of different shots that you give them and create a sequence that does tell a story, even if the filming of it feels like complete chaos. Now listen to how Matheson troubleshooted the continuity issues of daylight while filming. So if you look at that sequence, they start the battle, they go into the battle, Russell gets comes through the thing, kind of it's almost getting dark, but nice because the flames showed up nicely. He gets knocked off his horse, it starts snowing, it's not snowing, it gets dark, it's night time, and I just cranked the shutter open and just went down to six frames. I said, what are you doing? Well, just keep going, might as well, you know, whatever. The battle finishes, it gets light again. He's talking to uh, the Emperor, he's talking to Richard Harris. That was it, and it wasn't too bad. Well, it wasn't too bad, we killed all the Germans. It was very good, yeah. This simple technical choice honestly becomes a staple, a cinematic style for that specific battle. And it was done on set. It was just a passive decision that he made. Looking at all this, how can I myself, as well as you, apply this to our own films or use it for future projects we work on? Well, ultimately, we only have the time 
that we have when it comes to production. It can get expensive if something is taking far too long. And anything with elaborate production planning does require a lot of time. Implementing this method, I feel, would allow so many of us to include the dreamed epic battle scenes that we want to put in our films. And honestly, at least for me, can sometimes feel impossible when you're coming at it with the mindset of really detailed, storyboarded camera placement, character placement through the whole battle, when honestly I feel like I just need to make it more simplified. Sometimes less is more, and what we've seen through this Gladiator movie is that sometimes making it more chaotic, making it more dirty cinematically, can still be enjoyed by the audience. I truly wish I could go back and approach my battle scene in my short film from this approach, from this perspective. I might have ended up being more pleased with the end result. But for sure, now that I know this, it's just something to build on. I definitely will be considering this specific style if I have battle scenes in films in the future. And I hope this is something you can consider as well. And I hope this is helpful if you have these type of filmmaking ambitions. If you can't afford to do something, it's good to find a solution that gives the feeling of something rather than be there for with 40 stuntmen for you know three weeks and God knows horses, how many horses that 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 wasn't affordable. If you enjoyed this, I would appreciate you saying thanks by subscribing to the channel and liking this video. Leave a comment and let me know what was most interesting to you about this gladiator battle scene, and even if you remember how you felt the first time you watched it. I'd love to hear that.